Being monotone and being bounded are two very important properties that a sequence might have, and the monotone convergence theorem brings them together into a nice result. It states that a monotone sequence converges if and only if it is bounded. Remember, a sequence being monotone means that either each term of the sequence is less than or equal to the following term, which is monotone increasing, or each term is greater than or equal to the next term, which is monotone decreasing. The proof is actually really straightforward. It's not complicated at all, but we're just gonna spend a minute here to make sure we're really clear about what it is we're going to prove. This, of course, is an if and and only if result, which means there are two things we want to prove. We want to prove that a monotone sequence being bounded implies that it converges, and we want to prove that a monotone sequence being convergent implies that it is bounded. Now, we already proved that every convergent sequence is bounded. I'll leave a link to that proof in the description. So we could just throw this part out. It's stuff that we've already done. However, we're going to prove something a little more specific than this. So it's still going to require a little bit of work. In particular, in order to prove that a monotone sequence being convergent implies that it is bounded, we'll prove the contrapositive, that a monotone sequence being unbounded implies that it diverges. So these two implications are equivalent. Still at this point, we could just neglect to prove this since we already have done it. But the point is we will characterize specifically how the sequence diverges based on whether it's increasing or decreasing. Finally, here are the full details of what we're really going to prove. We'll prove that if an increasing sequence is unbounded, then it diverges to positive infinity. And we'll prove that if an increasing sequence is bounded, then it converges to the supremum of the set of the values that the sequence takes on. Similarly, if our monotone sequence is decreasing and unbounded, then it diverges to negative infinity, and if it is bounded, then it converges to the infimum of the set of the values that it takes on. You don't always get all of these details with a proof of the monotone convergence theorem. Sometimes the fact that this can be stated as an if and only if theorem is left out entirely. So consider yourself lucky for all the details we're gonna get to go through. Once more, I want to emphasize the reason we can't just defer to our previous proof that a convergent sequence is bounded in order to prove this implication is that we're proving something strong than this. We're characterizing the divergence specifically, that it diverges to positive infinity or to negative infinity, depending on whether it's increasing or decreasing. Also, as you may suspect, the increasing case of this proof is extremely similar to the decreasing case. So we'll go through the full details for the increasing case, but we'll only look briefly at the decreasing case because it's extremely similar. One last note before the proof, here are some pictures if you like that sort of thing to show us what's going on. If a sequence is increasing and unbounded, then certainly its terms must just keep veering off towards positive infinity. If a sequence is increasing and bounded, then it might look something like this. Its terms keep getting bigger, but eventually it's going to have to flatten out because it's bounded, and so it's going to converge to some value. Similar logic would lead us to similar conclusions for the decreasing cases. And now the proof. We'll start with increasing sequences. So we'll suppose that our sequence is increasing, and since this part of the proof is quicker, we will start by proving that an unbounded increasing sequence diverges to positive infinity. So we're assuming a n is increasing. Now let's also assume that it's unbounded. Remember, a sequence being unbounded means that it's unbounded below, unbounded above, or both. But since our sequence is increasing, we actually know that the first term of the sequence is a lower bound on the sequence's values because the terms after that can only stay the same or get bigger. Hence, our unbounded increasing sequence must be unbounded above. 
then remember what it means for a sequence to diverge to positive infinity. We need to take an arbitrary positive number, say m greater than zero, and prove that the terms of our sequence eventually surpass and stay above this number m. We already know that our sequence at some point gets greater than m because it's unbounded above. So we know there exists some term of the sequence, say a big N greater than than m by definition of being unbounded above. But then, since our sequence is increasing, what else does this tell us? Well, we know every term of the sequence after a big N has to at least be that big. So for all n greater than big N, we know that a n is at least as big as a big N, which is greater than m. And the important part of this inequality is that a n is greater than m. So we've shown that for any positive number m, eventually our sequence passes m and stays above m. Thus, by definition, a n diverges to positive infinity. Hence, if a monotone increasing sequence is unbounded, it does not converge, it diverges. In particular, it diverges to positive infinity. And here are the same details written out for a monotone decreasing sequence. We suppose that our monotone decreasing sequence is unbounded. Since it's decreasing, it must be unbounded below. Then, since we're trying to prove that it diverges to negative infinity, we take an m that's negative, m less than zero. Since it's unbounded below, we know our sequence has a term that's less than m, and since it's decreasing, we know that afterwards every term of our sequence is still less than m, and so the sequence must diverge to negative infinity. Then, all that remains for us to prove is that if an increasing sequence is bounded, then it converges, and if a decreasing sequence is bounded, then it converges. All right, now we're back up to considering increasing sequences. I'll just draw a line here since we already finished that first part of the proof. Remember, now we're trying to prove that a monotone increasing sequence being bounded implies that it converges. In particular, it converges to the supremum of the set of the values that it takes on. So now we'll say let our increasing sequence a n be bounded. This by definition means that the set of values that the sequence takes on is bounded, and thus by the completeness of the real numbers, this set has a supremum. So let's go ahead and call the supremum of the set of values this sequence takes on alpha. Then remember the goal is to prove that a n converges to alpha, this supremum. So we do what we do to prove that a sequence converges, we take an epsilon greater than zero. Then recall the epsilon definition of supremum. What do we know about alpha minus epsilon? Because alpha is the supremum of the terms of the sequence, it's the least upper bound, if we subtract anything from it, making it smaller, it must no longer be an upper bound. As in there must exist some term of the sequence, say a big N, that's greater than alpha minus epsilon epsilon. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that the epsilon definition of the supremum is an equivalent definition, but again, remember, it's just because the supremum is by definition the least upper bound. So if we reduce it by subtracting some positive number epsilon, we can no longer have an upper bound. So we have some term of the sequence, a big N, that's greater than alpha minus epsilon. Then similar logic to what we were using before Four, we know the sequence is increasing, so for every n greater than big N, for every term of the sequence after a big N, we have that a n is greater than or equal to a big N. But of course, a big N is greater than alpha minus epsilon. Then, taking this part of the inequality and just writing it in reverse order, we have that for every n greater than big n, 
alpha minus epsilon must be less than a n. Once more, we were guaranteed this, that every term of the sequence after the big nth term is greater than or equal to the big nth term because we're considering increasing sequences. So we have that alpha minus epsilon is less than a n, but remember, alpha is the supremum of the values of the sequence, so certainly every term of the sequence has to be less than or equal to alpha. Alpha is an upper bound by definition. But then we could make this look like something we really like if we add epsilon to the right side. In particular, if we add this positive number epsilon to the right side, we would now have that a n is greater than alpha minus epsilon and less than alpha plus epsilon. Then we can subtract alpha through this inequality to get something very nice. Subtracting alpha through the inequality gives us that negative epsilon is less than a n minus alpha is less than epsilon. And this is equivalent to the absolute value of a n minus alpha is less than than epsilon. These are equivalent inequalities. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that equivalence. We use it constantly, so make sure that you are familiar with it. And that's all we need. That shows that a n converges to alpha, the supremum of the set of its values by definition. We supposed that our increasing sequence was bounded, thus by the completeness of the reals, the set of its values must have a supremum. And then we showed that indeed our our sequence converges to that supremum. And then here's a quick look at how that proof would go for a decreasing sequence. We assume our decreasing sequence is bounded, so the set of its values has an infimum we call beta. Because the infimum is the greatest lower bound, if we add anything to it, we no longer have a lower bound, so we're guaranteed some term of the sequence, say a big N, that's less than beta plus epsilon. Since the sequence is decreasing, every term after that is also less than beta plus epsilon. And then we're left with a very similar string of inequalities resulting in the absolute value of a n minus beta being less than epsilon, and so a n converges to beta. And we should go ahead and write that part, a n converges to beta. We can go ahead and write the same sort of thing back up here with the increasing case. We proved that a n converges to alpha. And that's it. We've proven the monotone convergence theorem in full detail. A monotone sequence converges if and only if it is bounded. In particular, if our sequence is monotone increasing, then being unbounded implies that it diverges to positive infinity. Being bounded implies that it converges to the supremum of the values that it takes on. If we have a monotone decreasing sequence, then being unbounded implies that it diverges Converges to negative infinity, and being bounded implies that it converges to the infimum of this set of values that it takes on. We've done a lot of work with thinking what the limit of a sequence might be and then proving that it converges to that limit. But now, with the monotone convergence theorem, we could conclude that a limit converges without having the slightest clue what it converges to. If we know that it's monotone and we know that it's bounded, we know that we've got a convergent sequence.